Ladies and gentlemen, let's read Gaming to the Com video. Let us discuss Crytek. So, Eurogamer have just had an interview, an extensive one actually, with uh, Sivat Yerli. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that correctly. And he's gone into extensive detail over the reasons that Crytek have find themselves in financial issue. And more to the point, things such as staff not being paid and so on. So this is a very lengthy interview. I'm not going to go through the entire thing because frankly I'll be here for a while. So you could check that out in your own time. But what I do want to do is focus on a couple of key points that he's actually mentioned in this because I think it's actually a really, really, really good example of what can happen when a company goes pretty much into the red. And I'd also like to clear up some um, guesswork, I suppose, that I've made in the company and to kind of set the record straight. So, the major question, I suppose, we have to start with was what was the cause for the financial difficulties with Crytek? And so that actually pointed to this being the primary cause of transformation. We're observing where the industry is going and we know free-to-play or games as a service, online services in general, become the future of game. We've known this for a while, but we've finished up retail games or had them in development of home front. But that's a whole different uh, capitalization as well as the additional talent pool and different kinds of spending and forecasting all caused a temporary diminished capital resource. In other words, they're becoming poor, which was uh, now overcome. Uh, that was the main reason the situation, the whole transformation of Crytek. I I don't necessarily agree with him, to be honest. The free-to-play games or games as a service is necessarily going to be the future of gaming. I mean, I, it depends who you ask, but anyway, that's his, uh, that's his point. Anyway, um, it's also interesting to note when the interviewer asked him, well, why did you sell Homefront IP? Um, was it because of cost? He just didn't want to comment on cost at all in any way, shape or form. And this is actually becoming pretty standard actually in the gaming industry. Whenever you mention cost, developers just generally speaking just don't want to comment whatsoever. So let's get on to the subject of unpaid wages. He was asked, why did staff go unpaid? He said, you have two choices, right? Either you delay payments, gain delay, it's not that they didn't go unpaid, it's not that they didn't get paid, they got delayed. Delay payments to salvage the company, or you push your cash flow directly to the studios and file for insolvency. Both options are really bad, so you have to make the better of the bad situations. However, um, like we promised to everybody and what we said was the company is not in big risk and it just takes some time to salvage it. Some people are very impatient and got angry at the smallest delay. Also there was critic of us and not being proactive in communication which I, we don't understand because we've been frequently in the UK as well as every other studio talking about potentially rough times. He also went on to say that there was expectations from staff that weren't realistic. There are expectations that we can reveal the entire situation of any deal, any cash flows and any P&Ls and things like that. You can't do that. That's internal. Even an investor doesn't have that level of access, to be honest. And, say what you, and what I want to say is you can't make it right for everybody. The only upset we received was from a few people. I didn't want to blame the UK office as it's entirely because we're talking about a few people within the UK and the majority of the UK office as well as any other studio have been loyal and committed. He also stressed that the staff did know that they personally were not getting paid either and there are currently 700 people in the building but beforehand there were about 900 to 950 depending on the project and they also will not go into details where the money's come from. They just said nope. Uh, they said the partner and us have agreed that when they will announce it and they have also said that they have not been bought out it's just purely a revenue deal in other words they're going to share a percentage of their profits well hopefully anyway for the investor I'm not sure just how honest he's being I don't want to say he's lying but there's definitely is a little bit weird here because he says that how close of going out of business were you or going bankrupt and he says out of bankrupts uh, out of business or bankruptcy not very likely he said that basically securing this revenue deal saved Crytek then he said then basically the interviewer said well 
why did you need to offload Crytek then? Then he says, no, we didn't need to. We didn't need to downsize our company. Maybe this didn't come across. We didn't need to sell Homefront. Our deal would have secured Crytek's future, even if we had and maybe another 100 people on top of where the position was. It's an optimization stage, and we just thought strategically in order to focus on short-term mindset of the launch of the Warface. Hmm. Anyway, he also would like to point out that you understand the anger when you don't st uh, pay staff and he also said that once again only a few people of staff uh, members of their staff would like this the fact of the matter is like not all developers are getting pa i mean this is my personal take not all developers or not everyone in the team is getting paid uh, a, a substantial amount of money right it's like let's say you're just new there or you're just like a regular dude and you're just getting paid like let's say 25 30 whatever it is for the going rate because we do know and i've covered this in just another video that the going rate for some positions is actually down across the states and i'm gonna guess this in the uk as well um i've actually got a few developer friends who are finding it difficult to find work and they're programmers um and it's just like, it's kind of brutal out there, to be totally honest with you. So it's like, imagine you've got, let's even say they don't have a mortgage, but let's say they're renting a property and they've got like a, even if they're single, that's the thing, even if you're single, and let's say you're 25 years old, you're single, you don't have any mortgage, you don't have children, the fact of the matter is, you can't eat air. The bottom line is you still need food in your tummy and you still need food in your pantry and you still need to pay the rent. You can't just go to the bank and say, well, hey, I'm not being paid again. I mean, sure, you could maybe um, have, say, insurance for this type of thing, but a lot of people just don't do it. And even if you do, how long is that insurance realistically going to last? And even if it's indefinite, even if you can ask, you know, even if they say we're going to cover you for six months, the fact of the matter is, you still need to pay the gas, you still need to pay the water, and of course, you still need to pay, you know, to travel, to work, and everything else. And even if, even if, let's just assume your parents are really rich and they can afford you this, you just, you know, you're uh, pr basically you're doing the work. I'm going into work, I'm doing 9 to 5 or 9 to 6 or whatever the hell your hours are, and sometimes in development they're pretty damn brutal, and you're not quite sure when you're going to get paid. I, could, I understand from the perspective of Crytek, and this is the thing, I, I, I like Crytek as a company, I love their games, so I'm not just going militant on them for the sake of it, so I can understand both points of view, it's like, you can't pay money if you don't have the money, but at the same time, if you're a member of staff and you're working, I can also understand their member of staff's frustration, so I guess it's, it, it's just one of those things, um, communication and all. I think I'm going to cover this last point because it's something that I only discussed yesterday regarding Rise's recent announcement for the PC. And that is, how well did it do? Why was it switched to the Kinect? Is it going to be a Rise 2? And so on. So, basically speaking, Rise is in the forecast of what Microsoft had always shared with us and we didn't expect more. Our goal was to for Rise to be at the forefront of next generation console launch and we have done. Rise received tremendous promotion IP awareness and Rise is our IP and we do with it what we want in the future of Rise. That's important. And they also said that they did not push the game they said you know they basically left it down to the team not the management and when we asked do you want to get it done by christmas do you want a few more months and unanimously the, the team decided to launch window of the console because it's something emotional part of it accordingly and they also said um that there was not really any trouble during development at all the major, prob the major problem around this was some NDA stuff regarding the Xbox One and the fact that they were basically building the game at the same time the console was being built, which obviously is not going to be the easiest thing in the world. Let's just be totally and utterly honest here. So they don't feel that the team did anything bad or Microsoft screwed them over or anything like that. And they also said that they have very good relationships with Microsoft. They're not going to... Let's just say... Um, abandoning them but despite and this is the weird point remember how just a few minutes ago what did i say regarding 
the forecast. We did expect more than that, right? But a little bit further on down this interview, he said, we are constantly looking ways for what we could do together. We are not 100% happy with Xbox One sales right now. and want to wait to the end of the current gen and next gen consoles to catch up for Rise 2. We aren't saying it's cancelled, it's our IP. We just have to wait for the right timing. And they are not saying it's going to be exclusive to the Xbox One or necessarily released on the PS4. They're just saying that they can do whatever the bloody hell they like with it. They also admit they probably expanded too fast. Oh, and before you say to yourself, what about, Cry what about Crisis 4? I actually asked the same question I looked through, and there's nothing on Crisis 4. Basically, they're not commenting on it. He literally would not comment. Um, he just said, I don't know if it's a developer, and then when pressed further, and said, well, that's just stupid, basically. He said, that means I'm not commenting on it. Hopefully you found it somewhat interesting. So, I'm going to do ye old typical if you could like and subscribe or comment or, I don't know, send virtual hugs. That would be mighty appreciated. Anyway, I'll see you soon. Take care and bye for now.